Hello everyone, welcome to Music Theory Grade 3 and we are in week 10, brought to you by 2 and Able. Today we are going to be looking at harmonic analysis and melody writing. Harmonic analysis. There are a few points that you need to keep in mind when you are doing an analysis of a passage. The first thing, you must be able to always identify the key and time signatures. You must be able to determine primary chords and intervals and also all the musical terms and signs. This is the example. You are given a passage. Here's our passage below. And we can see that the passage is in D, meaning D major, because it's written with a capital letter. It's got two sharps. There's, there's our two sharps, which is F sharp and C sharp. And our one chord, or our tonic chord, starts with the bass note of D. That's why we are convinced that the passage is in D major. So there, the key is D. The time signature is that C over there. It's indicated by a C. What do we know about a C? It speaks about common time, which is always for time. They also used Roman numerals for all the chords. So one Roman numeral, four Roman numeral, and five Roman numeral. The primary chords, which are all in root position, one, four, five, they are all in root position. Let us verify. We start with the one. We have seen that it's in D. In the key of D, the tonic is D. In the key of D, what is the four or the subdominant? It is a G. There is a G over there. Then back to the D. Then the 5 or the dominant. In the key of D, what is it? It's A. D. And then it ends on the tonic, which is D. So all the primary chords are in root position. And then we also see that sign over there. What do we call that sign? It's called a fermata, which means a musical pause. So you must be able to recognize the signs and be able to explain them and name them. And then also we notice that it starts with an incomplete bar. What do we call an incomplete bar? Upbeat or anacrusis. So basically, with harmonic analysis, you must be able to identify all the elements that I have named in the passage. Melody writing. There are also a few pointers about melody writing. In this grade, you'll be given two opening bars and you'll be required to add only two answering bars to close off your melody. Point number one. The last bar of the melody will always consist of a cadence. What is a cadence? A cadence is musical punctuation. It could be a comma 
or a full stop. So the progression 5 to 1 is equivalent to a full stop. So from dominant to tonic, it's equivalent to full stop. And then from 1 to 5 or from tonic to dominant, it's equivalent to a comma. So that means that if you use this progression 5 to 1, then you have ended your sentence or your phrase. But if you use 1 to 5, then your phrase has not ended and must continue. Therefore, in the last bar of the melody, we always want to close off with a full stop. Hence the double bar line. The last two bars must consist of notes. From the dominant 5 or the tonic 1. Here's our example. So you'll be given an opening bar like the one over here. Then you must add two bars to close off your melody. We can observe that the melody is in C major. There's our ana analysis again, our harmonic analysis, because the melody starts with a C, E, G, which is the tonic of the C major. It doesn't have sharp soft flats, so that's why we're convinced that the melody is in C major. We are also looking at the time signature, which is 3, 4. So whatever that we're going to be adding to this melody, it must equal to 3, 4. We've learned about time signatures. So we notice that the highlighted part, which is the last two bars, which will be your third bar, it has some notes from the dominant and ends on a definite tonic. So from the dominant, what is the dominant of, or the dominant triad of C major? It is G, B, D. Let's see if those notes are there. G, we don't have a G. But do we have a B? Yes, we do. Do we have a D? Yes, we do. There's the B again. So, which shows us that these notes, these three notes, they belong to the dominant. Therefore, it is our five. And then we end on a definite tonic. Now remember guys that you always have to complement the first two bars with the rhythm okay, to finish on a definite tonic. So the whole melody must be complemented. If there were more quavers that were used than crotchets. Then your closing off must have more quavers than crotchets. If it were only minims, then you must complement it with minims so that we have a workable pattern. Another example for melody writing. There's our passage over there. The first thing, we can clearly see that the key of the melody is D major because the key signature has two sharps, namely F 
and C. The melody starts on the tonic D. The melody is mostly quavers. Therefore, when we compose the last two bars, they must complement the first rhythm and end on a definite perfect cadence, which is from dominant to tonic or from five to one. We can see the highlighted part. Those are the bars that we added at the end. Remember that if the melody starts on an anacrusis or upbeat, we spoke about it in harmonic analysis, the last bar must also be incomplete. The incomplete bar in the beginning will complete the last bar. For instance, in the example above, the melody starts on the fourth beat of the bar Therefore, the last bar will only end on the third beat. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day.